All right, so today, hold on, hi, I forgot to say hi. So today we're gonna talk about my foundation collection. We're gonna talk about the best, the worst, the most expensive, the least expensive, the one I've repurchased the most, the one I use every day, the ones that disappointed me, maybe they're not worth the hype. We've got all kinds of topics we're gonna discuss. This is maybe the fourth one of these I've done. I did one on my palettes, and then I did blush and lips, and then this is foundation. So if you're interested in checking the other ones out, I do have a playlist, you can watch all of them. If you're interested in binging them, I'll have it linked down below. Okay. Whew, everyone take a breath with me. Take a sip of whatever. Another thing I wanted to mention is that I will also have linked below any videos where I'm actually using these products. I will have linked so you can see them in action. I'm, I'm obviously not gonna try, you know, 15 foundations on my face today. My poor skin couldn't handle it. So just for your reference, if you're new to my channel or you just didn't know, my skin is pretty darn normal. I can tend to be a little bit dry, but it really is pretty much down the middle, pretty normal. And my preferences for foundation, because I do think that's important when we get into talking about how I feel about certain products, I'm not into super high coverage, but I'm also not into so low of coverage that it doesn't cover anything like the Glossier skin tint. I like something right in the middle, medium-ish coverage. Sometimes on quick days, I might want a tinted moisturizer that's got a little coverage too. But generally, I like more of a satin dewy look. So first category is, what is the newest foundation I have? I think this one's the newest. I feel like there were a couple that were bought around the same time, but I think it's the Beauty Bakery Instabake. So I tried this a few months ago. I really like it. I've only used it a couple times because it has a little bit higher of coverage than I'm right now wearing every day, but it's really pretty. And if you want higher coverage, but you don't want it to look super matte, I think you'd like this because this definitely has more of, I don't wanna say glowy, cause it's not glowy, but it definitely is more of a satin-like finish. It looks a little more skin-like, but it definitely does have a little bit higher of coverage. I would say it's medium, but you can build it up to be even higher than that if you want. It's just really pretty. I wear the shade 347C, and I just find that it's easy to work with. It applies really easily any way you try to apply it. And I prefer a sponge pretty much across the board for anything, including BB creams. I definitely prefer a sponge. The only thing is this shade is a little bit yellow for me. I make it work. I mean, like anything, none of these are like perfect, perfect. It gets near to impossible to find like a perfect match, but this one is really nice. Like I said, if you want more of a medium to full coverage foundation that looks more like skin, it look, makes your skin look healthy, you would really like this. Okay, this is kind of gross. I don't know how long I've had this, but it's starting to separate and look really weird. Expires, oh no, I think I've got time. So this is the Physicians Formula Healthy Foundation. I had to look up if they even sell this anymore. They do. For some reason, I thought it was discontinued and I was heartbroken because I actually think this is great. These have the strongest, weirdest smell ever. I wish it didn't smell that way because I've, I've recommended this to so many of you guys and so many of you guys are like, okay, I tried it or I smelled it in store on a tester and it just smells so strong. It really does. It's not a pleasant smell. Um, but the finish is one of my absolute favorites on the skin. It looks skin-like, like your skin can breathe. It looks slightly glowy. It looks covered and oh my gosh. I know a lot of people are grossed out by the doe foot applicator. I don't mind that at all. It's the same way, you know, with concealer, I apply it with the doe foot and stick it back in too. So it doesn't gross me out, but it's just the smell of this. And this one, I just feel like is old, even though it says it hasn't expired. I have the shade in that LN3. By the way, quick little, in case you're curious of what foundation I'm wearing today, I screwed this up. I wanted to wear like one of my favorites on my face. However, I'm wearing my favorites in like literally every other video on my channel. I was wanting to try this one out to see if it fit in a category because it had been a while. This is the Anastasia Luminous Foundation. I tried it again today, it had been a while like I said and I just don't think it's anything special. So it's not in any category, but I figured you might be curious what I'm wearing. I think it looks okay, but I did have to cover my nose again with like some concealer and it's just nothing special. All right, this is a fun category. Most expensive, that would have to go to the La Mer Soft Fluid Longwear Foundation. Here's the thing, I'm almost out of this. This probably has already gone bad. I used this recently and I can't decide if it's because I've tried so many more foundations since I bought this a few years ago or if it's because it's gone bad, but I just wasn't as impressed with this lately as I had been. And if you recall long ago, I had compared these two, the Physicians Formula One to this one, and I actually think the Physicians Formula One is nicer. It looks better on the skin. Again, this has a max of medium coverage. It's a little bit more fluid than some other foundations. And it just, it looks fine on the skin, but it's not $120 spectacular, okay? I'm telling you that. If you're someone that's been like lusting after this, it's not a bad foundation, but you can find the exact same thing, if not better, at 
a way lower price point. I just, I would never buy this again, I can tell you that. And the smell of this is also incredibly strong, incredibly strong. By the way, the La Mer shade I wear is Ivory 2. And that is actually a really good shade match for me. All right, my most inexpensive goes to the Wet n Wild, where did it go, there it is. The Wet n Wild Photo Focus Foundation, the dewy version. That is my favorite. I have used this so much. I'm probably about halfway through it. I have the shade Shell Ivory. It's got this paddle applicator, which I don't hate. It just makes the actual bottle so messy when you put it away. But it's kind of nice because you can just paint it on your face and then blend it in. It just looks gorgeous on the skin. I. It just looks amazing. It's exactly the kind of foundation I like that's a little bit more light to medium. It wears pretty well. I mean, this is, if you're working a shift that's like 14 hours, this with a mask and stuff, this is not gonna be the foundation for you for right now. It's not gonna hold up to that, but it is beautiful. I love it. I feel like this is something I'm gonna be using a lot, especially in this coming winter, just because it is, it does look a little more hydrating. Does everyone else have like their favorite fall or Halloween coffee mugs or tea mugs. I pulled mine out the other day and it's it ma it's making me so happy in the morning when I'm making my coffee. Probably the most important category in this video is what is my most used everyday foundation. That has to go to the CoverGirl and Olay Advanced Radiance. That might surprise you because I love a product that's from Misha, their BB cream, which we're gonna talk about in a second. That could easily also be on this, and I actually mix these two a lot too. But when we're just talking about what am I really using at some point almost every single day, and it would be this, I'm almost out of it. I haven't run out of a, about a true foundation in years. That That's how much I like this. This is thicker than you might imagine. It really is, but it just gives the most beautiful medium coverage I just feel like it actually stays in place. Anytime, it, it's beautiful on its own, but if you mix it with literally anything else, it makes everything look good. I don't know what magic is in this bottle. Now, they have another bottle that looks similar, but I think it might have stripes or something. It's not the same. It has to be this one. This is Advanced Radiance. Those are two different lines I've learned. This is the one, it's kind of hard to find. You might be able to find it in person. I wanna say Walmart sells this version, but it's not the striped one. If you've tried the striped one, let me know how it is, but this is the one that I just love. I have the shade 110 Classic Ivory. Okay, so my most repurchased, another important category, does have to be my Misha BB Cream. I'm gonna talk, I'm gonna show you a swatch of the two shades I have. I get a lot of questions about that because you can't find it in store, as far as I know, anywhere in the United States if you live here. This, you can buy it on Amazon, Walmart, uh, Misha's site. It's definitely cheaper on Amazon. It's like 12 bucks on there. The shade range is not great. They did say they're actually adding more shades and reformulating and repackaging, et cetera, which scares me when it comes to the reformulation. I don't know how much they're gonna change, but I'm really excited that the shade range is finally being extended. So. They're very gray tone. If that's not gonna work for you, again, you might have to wait until they come out with more shades. There's 21 and there's 23. So obviously this is against a self-tanned arm, but I typically go for 23. When I'm blending it in, it's got coverage, like way more than you would expect for a BB cream, but it blends in so beautifully. I just, I love it. If you tend to like similar face foundations as me, you will love this. You can use your fingers. I'll apply it with the sponge a lot. Again, I mix this with other things too. It's just an all-in-one product. I have not traveled in years. I have not traveled without the Misha BB cream. It is my favorite every day. I, that's why I'm saying this really could have also been in my every day. It could be either one, but I really hope they don't mess with the formula too much. But I've repurchased this shade number 23. This might be my fourth or fifth bottle of this. I love it. Worth the hype. This one was kind of hard. I ended up going, cause it needed to be something that was hyped up enough and for long enough, but that I think is actually pretty good. And that would have to go to the NARS Sheer Glow Foundation. I did have to watch a video on this. When I first bought it, I was not a fan. Actually, I think this might've been the second time I've owned this. I think I bought it years ago and I didn't like it, but that was back when I liked a little more full coverage. So I rebought it, I wanna say last year, and I bought the pump that you can buy for it. I think this is best applied with your fingers. When I've applied it with a sponge or a brush, with the brush, I feel like it looks streaky. With the sponge, it shears it out way too much. But with your fingers, and I was watching some NARS like YouTube videos on how to apply this, and it's literally, you know, they're just kind of blending it in with your fingers. It looks gorgeous. But like I said, I really do think you have to apply it that way. If you have any tips on using this, let me know. But I love it. Once I apply it the proper, once I learn to apply it that way, 
It was gorgeous. Again, it's not gonna give you any more than medium. There's a reason it's called Sheer Glow. It's not super dewy either, which I like. So it's a little bit sheer, a little bit glowy. It's that perfect kind of everyday type foundation. This shade Yukon is a pretty darn good shade match for me. And I definitely like having the pump. I think if you're gonna buy it and use it, it's worth buying the pump for it. Now, on the other hand, not worth the hype. This would have to go to the Pat McGrath Skin Fetish Foundation. It's just not right for me. And so, and you know, it's weird because I've seen some videos of people absolutely loving this and they have a similar skin type as I do. But I've also heard of people that have more oily skin and they still don't like it. I just felt like it looked really cakey. I could not get this to look good on my skin anywhere, not in the air. Like, I feel like every foundation I could use always looks good on my cheeks, but you know, some just don't look good on my nose or like the center of my forehead. This looked bad everywhere. It looked bad everywhere. It didn't mix well with concealers I would try it with. And for the price point, I thought the packaging was absolutely beautiful, but I was just so disappointed in the actual product itself. So if you're curious, I have light too. I don't even think this was the greatest shade match for me either, but I just, no. Fun category, what is my favorite foundation from a favorite brand? And I chose the Charlotte Tilbury Light Wonder. This is one, again, years ago I didn't like because I had different tastes. Now I really have grown to appreciate. I have the shade number three, Fair. I did very recently, like a few weeks ago, do a Charlotte Tilbury Best and Worst. I have so many products in that brand and I have so many that I love and so many I have dupes for, like great, like better dupes. And then some that I just don't think are good. So if you wanna check that video out after this, I'll link it up in the eye and down below because that's going to give you even more information about this and about other foundations of theirs. Uh, this is my favorite. Out of their foundations, I've tried the regular one. I've tried the new Flawless Finish. I They're okay, but none of them are exactly right for my skin. This one is more of a elevated tinted moisturizer, and I just think it makes my skin look really healthy. Do I think it's worth the high, high price point? I think that you can find some at the drugstore, and we're going to talk about a few that are similar here in a second. So don't feel like, you know, because I'm saying I like it, that it absolutely needs to be this one because I am still reaching for my Misha BB cream over this. I'm still reaching for the CoverGirl foundation over this. So that's something to keep in mind, but I really do like this and I really do have a lot of favorites from that brand. Most underrated, and it could be a little bit underrated because it's still newer to the drugstore, but I freaking love this. I've almost used, well, I've probably used more than half of this up. This is the L'Oreal Age Perfect Radiant Serum Foundation. I wear the shade 15 rose ivory fantastic shade match for me personally I just think this is beautiful on the skin now if you have oily skin I don't think this is gonna be the one for you it's not overly overly glowy but it definitely I feel like even with my normal skin I do feel like I need to set my t-zone with this but once I do that it stays beautifully throughout the day I just think my skin looks healthy it's got probably medium coverage it's again kind of an amped up tinted moisturizer and amped up BB cream where it does have that little bit more coverage but it has more of the finish of a tinted moisturizer and that's why I love it. I This is something I know myself I'm going to repurchase when I inevitably run out of it. I love this category. Most nostalgic or like most old school beauty YouTube vibes. And this was like the easiest choice ever. It has to go to the Revlon Color Stay Foundation. I have the shade 110 Ivory. It's an okay shade match for me. I tried this recently and I it was just okay. I think it's a little more coverage than what I need now. Again, preferences have changed, but I used to love this. I also loved, I don't even think they still make it, the Revlon Colorstay Whipped Foundation. That stuff was so good. I loved that. Actually, that kind of reminds me of the CoverGirl and Olay now that I'm thinking about it because they're a little bit thicker. This was just the OG and now, and I think they did a few years ago, they have a normal to dry skin line and then they have like more of a combo oily skin line. I got the normal to dry. It's just okay. Most disappointing foundation and I'm just gonna finally freaking declutter it. It survived far too many declutters. It's the Bare Minerals Foundation Stick. It's so pretty and moisturizing and it this is probably the most moisturizing creamy foundation stick I've ever used but it's to a fault because it within an hour breaks apart on my nose and the center of my forehead. I can't get this to stick and I keep wanting to keep it and keep using it and every time I use it, I'm disappointed again and again. So I need to finally get rid of it. When I do these best and worst of my collection videos, I always follow it up a few weeks later with a declutter of that same category. So here in a few weeks, if you subscribe, stick around, I will have declutter of these as well. And there's a lot, I have another 25 foundations I'm not even discussing today and a lot of those are gonna get declutter. 
decluttered too. So just stay tuned for that. I love declutters. Most surprising, and this is a recent purchase. Oh, I'm just now remembering. This is probably my newest. Oh, well, well, here we are. We're talking about it anyway. My most surprising is the Maybelline BB cream. So I think this has been around for a while. I don't know if it was relaunched or maybe they just re-promoted it, whatever. Cause so many of you guys have said you've used this for years. I recently, I guess, rediscovered it at the store. I don't know. I really like it. I've realized I don't like applying this with my fingers or a brush. I like this with a sponge because it's still gonna shear it out, obviously. It's a more sheer formula than, you know, my medium coverage stuff, but I can still use a sponge with it and it just spreads it out so beautifully. And I feel like for those days where I'm just doing a quick five minute makeup look, maybe throwing on a little bit of liner and mascara, a quick blush and like concealer in this, I just think it looks beautiful. My skin looks put together. It looks nice and healthy. Again, this is light to maybe lightish medium coverage. It's not gonna go above that, but I really was surprised at how much I liked this. Okay, most unique formula would, again, this was like the easiest choice ever, has to go to the Kosas Tinted Face Oil. Huh, this is something that every time I look at it, I don't use it often anymore, and I should, because I. I like it, it's it's nice for every day, but I feel like the application method stresses me out so much that I, I just don't end up reaching for it. And so the idea is that you can just use a couple of drops at a time and just spread it out. You ha I think you have to use your fingers. And she, oh, but it's like the most liquid thing you've ever seen, but it does add this weird amount of coverage, like a few drops, that was like way too much. So it's super unique. It can be pretty on the skin, but like I said, I just get so stressed out when I'm applying it because I have to do it like zone by zone and I'm not used to doing that. I'm used to just going to town. I have a feel, I don't think I will ever end up like using this up. We'll see again. I wanna keep kind of playing with it a little bit more, but it's definitely, definitely the most unique. That is like a lighter coverage uh, product. I think you can build it up a tiny bit, a tiny bit. That is everything. I love doing these videos. I hope that you're enjoying them. It's such an easy way and an enjoyable for me, I hope for you, way to kind of share these little parts of my collection that maybe aren't getting enough love. Maybe I just don't talk about all these because obviously I'm a human the same way you are. We all have certain favorites we reach for day in and day out. And while I do do beauty videos and I maybe try more than the average person, I still stick to my old faithfuls. You know what I mean? There are just certain ones that when you find something you love, you just latch onto it and use it all the time. So this got me excited to actually pull a few of these out. Like I'm excited to use the Kosas one a little bit more. I'm going to go put it in my bathroom where I get ready. And I'm also going to grab my beauty bakery one because I want to give that some more love. Anyway, if you did enjoy, I hope that you will subscribe and join our happy little corner of the internet. I upload three times a week. I do beauty, but I also do lifestyles and vlogs and grocery hauls and all kinds of stuff. I'd love to have you join us. And other than that, I will catch you guys in my next one.